Okay, let's have a bit of a look at our reaction rate uh, graphs um, for enzymes. Um, the first one we're going to look at here is for temperature. And what we'd expect to happen is that when the temperature is quite low down at this end, that the reaction rate is going to be quite low as well. So we're going to have some values sort of down around here. And as the temperature increases, what happens is the molecules are um, moving quicker. Um, the uh, increasing their collisions um, and increasing reaction rate so the, the reactions occur quicker. So what we see is this steady climb up of reaction rate. Now what happens um, with enzymes, enzymes remember are made of proteins, is we reach a stage where this there's a, a point where the protein is denatured okay? and we see a, a very quick drop off of reaction rate and beyond this point um, the enzymes denatured and no more reaction can occur. So this is the optimum temperature here and this is a critical temperature where denaturing of the enzyme occurs. Okay, And that's a pretty typical uh, reaction rate graph for temperature. Next look, let's look at pH and the graphs we sort of see of pH are very very similar um, in that they quite often look like this. Uh, again there's an optimum temperature Oh, sorry, an optimum pH um, where the reaction rates are quickest and that might depend on you know, the environment where the uh, enzymes are um, um, predicted to work. Now enzymes can get um, denatured in extreme pHs uh, but quite often there's a, a bit of more of a gradual process of this before rather than just reaching a critical point um, and, and that graph may actually um, ha have zero um, reaction rate if the enzyme is denatured. Okay? Quite often we, we see graphs like this that show a variety of, of different enzymes all having a particular optimum pH, uh, the, a particular pH where they get the, the, the biggest reaction rate. Now the next ones we, we, uh, we're going to look at now often cause a little bit more confusion um, but what we see here is as we increase the um, look at the effect of enzyme con concentration and as we increase the enzyme concentration there's more enzymes there we'd expect the reaction rate to increase okay now what we what we do see sometimes is as a long it, it plateaus out and levels off like this and that leveling off is really due to the amount of substrate so if you only have a particular number of glucose molecules perhaps that you're breaking down the re reaction rate will, will depend on that, okay? And it can't it can't uh, go any quicker than the supply of those particular molecules. If if that was an unlimited supply um, of, of of the substrate, what we what we'd see is the um, reaction rate continuing to uh, increase as we increase more enzymes. And the final one we'll look at here is substrate concentration. And again, as we increase the substrate, so the molecules that are going to react together, uh, we'd expect them to the reaction to increase. And the limiting factor here will be the enzyme concentration. You can only react as quickly as the number of enzymes there. Okay. And again, if you had an unlimited enzyme concentration, it increased. But having an unlimited enzyme con concentration at supply of enzymes is probably a lot less likely than you know in our previous example. So we quite often see a graph like this with a plateau, and this plateau is based on the number of enzymes. If you had more enzymes present, that plateau and reaction rate would be uh, a little higher. Okay, um, you, you'd have more points for the reaction to occur. Okay. Uh, good luck with your reaction rate graphs for enzymes.